Hello gamers and welcome back to another episode of Auto Terra Firmacraft. This is episode 11 and last episode we built this pretty awesome ore processing building behind us after upgrading our drilling machine and going out into the world and getting in a ridiculous amount of resources. Thanks to all of you in the comments we learned about some of the magic things we can do with cobble and washing and um, yeah we, we're, we're basically sorted on the ore front and we got ourselves a whole bunch of stuff that's going to open some possibilities for what we're going to get up to today. So today we're going to do steel. Steel, 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 steel. Oh my goodness. We've been waiting so long to get to steel and there have been a lot of missing things we needed to get there. I think today we can finally do it. We can finally make a crucible. We can make some pig iron. From the pig iron, we can get to uh, steels, high carbon steels, a whole bunch of other stuff. We've got to learn a lot. We haven't done any of this before and it's all going to be super exciting. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we go. Here's the book on the crucible, and it goes from temperatures yellow, yellow, white, four. Oh no, this is what it costs. This is what it takes to make it the unfired crucible. We need to nap this from the the special clay we need to make with the kaolinite and graphite, and the charcoal forge goes underneath it, giving us this new nine by nine interface. And yeah, that's all I know so far. I guess we've just got to make one and find out how it works. Kaolinite, graphite, and clay. Awesome. This allows us to make fire clay. ka -ching. Like that. Oh yeah! Okay, let's heat this thing up. Woohoo! Here we go. Crucible! Nice advancement made. The crucible, of course. Uh, now we need to uh, figure out how we make this. So it looks like we need stone and charcoal forge underneath. I'm guessing it's going to need sky access and it's going to set everything on fire again. We're not going to burn our house down. So we're going to put it somewhere sensible, but we don't want it to be a real pain in the butt to get to. So... Um, let me figure something out. How about down here? Okay, let's try that here. Woohoo! Alright, it's off. How do we keep this hot? Oh, you gotta put the. Mm. So it's charcoal forge, just like we've got downstairs. It's just got a crucible on top of it. So you just gotta do this. We may just put our crucible on top of these. I don't I don't know if there's a benefit to having a charcoal forge any longer. Just bung in some iron. Are these all just going to disappear? I, I would assume because it's a pot, like unlike the charcoal forge, you don't lose this because when it goes molten, where's it going to go? It's just going to stay in the pot. I guess this will just fill up with molten iron in this case. I mean, we're going to get cast iron by doing this. Are you telling me we still need a billows? I guess we can go and make one of those. Maybe the um, crucible acts like an insulator and actually needs more heat to get hotter inside. Okay, that's doing it. It's pushing it over the edge. Ah, look at that. Ah, you can just fill this up. There's cast iron in there. Ah, that's amazing. Let me take this out and just put these in one at a time. Okay. Oh, that's so much better. That we could fill this up and you can mix stuff in here. Ah. Yeah, I'm really not seeing the benefit of having this in a dedicated station down here. So I think what we're actually going to do is uh, restore this. We're making a second crucible in a crucible. Totally inception moment there. Uh, we're going to fill this in. And um, I think we're just going to place those crucibles on top of here. Yeah. Nice. So we can still access the original charcoal forge. We can access the bellows. Oh, I just noticed. Watched at the top there. The whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> That's fun. We can access the crucibles on top. Um, yeah, I don't see any downside to this. This is what we're going to do going forwards. Oh, I wish I'd read this stuff more carefully before. Like to get to get to a steel, we need pig iron, and pig iron we actually make in a blast furnace. 
Oh, here we go. We need a blast furnace in order to make pig iron. This is where I'm getting confused. And we need the sheets for that. So we need nine sheets to make a blast furnace. Let's look at this guy. Advanced device used for the creation of steel by mixing iron. This is why we needed the crucible. And a lot of raw iron sheets. Yes, eight of them. Okay. Okay, okay. This is... Let's get the sheets first. This looks complicated. Of course, I forget that uh, to make sheets, you've got to make a double ingot. That allows you to make a sheet. So this is expensive. This is 16 ingots in order to get uh, all of those sheets that we need for that. And we're going to need one of these crucibles as well, aren't we? Okay. Okay, they are now cooled. We can make our first blast furnace. Yoink. Aha, blast off. New achievement. How does this work? Do we just stick it on the um, charcoal forge? No, this is something else. You will need to construct the blast furnace along with its chimney. The chimney must be composed out of fire bricks. As they are strong enough to withstand the intense heat, it must then be lined with wrought iron sheets. I need more sheets? Oh my goodness. Okay, so we need more fire clay. Hmm. We've only got three left after making two crucibles. Not enough. Could have sworn I had more kaolinite. Did I only get that tiny, tiny amount from all the pink sand that we gathered? All right, well, this means one thing. Uh, we need to go back to the pink sand beach and collect uh, everything we need from there. Make some more kaolinite. Okay, this place is an ecological disaster. We've just removed a lot of this beach, but we've got a good amount of uh, sandstone and sand. Yes, tons of sand. Excellent. From this, we should be able to get tons and tons more kaolinite. Much more than before. So we're home and we're processing the output of the ores. And um, I realize we already had a bunch of pink sandstone from before. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh well. Well, now we know what we can do with all of this. Okay, beach processing complete. And we have a good amount of kaolinite now. Look at that. Four and a bit stacks. We crushed all of the sand and a bunch of the sandstone into sand. And we still got a whole lot more of that stuff left as well. Yeah, tons of it. So if we ever need more, we're not going to need to go back to the beach for a while. We did also get some black sand. And I've got some coke powder, which we've never had before. Looks like we can make black dye. We can also make bituminous coal. Okay, it just gets hotter. Black dye would be cool, though. Fire clay. Okay, so we should be able to nap the fire clay. Two lines get us three bricks. How many? We've got 33 right now. Nap, 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 nap. Nap, 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 nap. Okay, now we've got to heat these to yellow whites to get fire bricks. Looks like we need four fire brick blocks. Each one of those is five, so we need 20. That makes two, so we need 10. 10, 10 fire bricks. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We're good, we can do that. There we go, fire bricks. Five, 10. Nice, we've got four fire brick blocks. We know we're gonna need some sheets to coat this thing in, so let's get some uh, iron heated up. Okay, so I assume this thing's gonna need sky access as well. Uh, we could put it in the little nook we just made under the stairs. And if I'm looking at this correctly, this looks like it needs three, six, 12 iron sheets to go around it, which is so expensive. Let's um, Let's just figure that out. Having more layers increases the capacity of the blast furnace, allowing it to smelt more steel at once. Each chimney layer up to a maximum of five allows the blast... Okay, so we shouldn't put it here because uh, we can't make it any taller. So I'm actually going to take this apart and we're going to put it down lower. So we're basically going to rebuild this room a little lower down, I guess. So we have lowered the floor. This should hopefully give us enough space. We've got an open chimney going all the way up there. So we want to put this right there. 
Yeah, I think that works. Lowering it down a little block here, so it makes this way more accessible to get inside of it, and it gives us a little bit of extra height here. So if you wanted to go two, three, four, five, it will fit. Nice. So I'm guessing stuff gets put in the center there. Okay. So yeah, it says so in order to use it, we need to drop items in the top. Okay, a little bit more searching around on the internet to find out how to do this. We need this thing called a toyer. Toyer. This is what this mysterious slot here is. If only there was a tool tip here explaining what this was. But I think what that does is allows somehow it like, I guess it sort of pipes whatever you put in here down below. And then this is this is kind of like a crucible, so we should end up with molten stuff left here now, as far as I am aware. And we also need a billows, which uh, we can put in. Yeah, like that. We meant to go mining for hematite soon. I crushed so much of this into iron ore directly that um, we haven't got a lot left. But I know where I can get it easily. All right, we're off. It's doing its thing. Oh, we need to put a we need to put a crucible beneath this. Ah, oh, that's the very last thing on the instruction page. <laughs> on the wiki. Okay, okay, okay. Well, something's gone, and it didn't end up in there. I I don't get it. What is going on? <laughs> I'm gonna have to go do some more reading. This is really confusing. Uh, okay, okay. The missing ingredient that I have not been uh, adding is flux. We need to put flux in there with it. Uh, apparently, it only takes four pieces per layer. An equal amount of flux and then as much charcoal as we can fit. Look, that's different. We've got an input and a fuel level. That is different than before. Oh, it's just used everything. Let's end it up in here. Oh my goodness, look, pig iron. Yes. Okay, I think I'm getting the hang of this. Just got to keep this blast furnace nice and hot. And then the inputted stuff falls out real quick. Goes into here. I can swap this out. Get another one on the go. Put more stuff in here. Just keep it going. Semi-successful first run. That does take a little bit of getting used to. And uh, it is slow with just one layer. We're going to have to make a lot more. But um, 16, 18, 19 pig iron ingots. Now those we can take back upstairs because it'll be way easier to do it here where our anvils are. And um, we can heat these guys up. I believe that we can shape them from this into, well, let's look, an anvil. We can shape them into a high carbon steel ingot by shaping them. Because this on its own, pig iron ingot, doesn't really have many uses. However, once we get one of these, we can high carbon steel works into a steel ingot. <laughs> once we have a steel ingot, then we can make some stuff. Boom. And then steel ingot. Steel, steel ingot, whoa. Industrialized. Nice. That is a serious milestone. Ah, oh, look at that. Beautiful. Let's make some more. Nice. 19 steel ingots. We have steel. Woohoo. A little celebratory whoosh. But we need to get to other steels. So there's blue steel, which can be worked into high carbon, and then blue steel. Weak blue steel is made from liquid steel, silver, bismuth, bismuth bronze, and black steel. How do we get black steel? Okay, we need a weak steel ingot and pig iron together to make black steel. A high carbon black steel ingot, and that can be worked into black steel. So pig iron and a weak steel ingot. I've just... <laughs> I should have looked this up beforehand. I've got to have the two phases of this before it gets to this. So I'm going to need lots of this anyway. So how much more iron stuff do? Lots and lots and lots. Good. Okay. 
It's funny, after you've done these things a good number of times, you do get into a little bit of a uh, sort of automated sequence with it all. As soon as I start to see this drop, give it a good old top up. Once we see the input disappear, bump. We're going to run up the top. We've already got coal there from last time. We've got our inventory ready to just throw, throw, throw. We leave a whole bunch of coal sitting on top. Pump this again. Get it hot. Take that out from there. Oh, we broke an ingot, so let's get another one. Make sure it's in there, ready for the next collection, and repeat. Oh my goodness, it's apple season. Um, while they're heating up, I guess I can pick up a load of these for animal feed. And I can eat them for about five minutes before they all go off. Okay, okay. First we need weak steel. This is what we're missing. Weak steel. And we need <laughs> liquid steel, black bronze, nickel. So let's really test out these uh, crucibles, eh? Black bronze, remind ourselves. 50% copper, 25% silver, gold. So, copper, that and that. Look at these percentages. Mm, I seem to have messed this up a little bit. At least it gives you the percentages. No, no, this is perfect. Look, copper, 50% silver, silver. So that's black bronze. Uh, let's grab some of these ingot molds. We can just start pulling it out of here. Perfect. Uh, that's all the nickel we have. 28 ingots. Uh, 64 and 6. Pretty good. 70 black bronze. I actually didn't mean, need to make nickel ingots. I could have just thrown the raw nickel in. Of course, it's all getting melted. Still, it's nice to see this. I feel like I need a dedicated metal wing of the house just look at all these different alloys and stuff it's so cool this is this is mad science stuff like proper metallurgy chemistry nonsense but i, I love it and like just seeing all these different colored ingots around it's cool the black bronze is in the steel is in the nickel's about to melt weak steel oh yeah Let's get our first weak steel ingot. All right, now we've got 12 weak steel ingots. So now we need to mash together weak steel, pig iron, smash them together, stick them in there, and, oh, uh, yeah, high carbon black steel. All right, okay, let's make a few more of those. Oh my goodness, we're not going to be able to work with this. We're going to have to make a black steel anvil. Of course, we can't just use an iron anvil. It's not hard enough. Oh my goodness, we're going to need so much of this stuff. Uh, the, the sheer enormity of getting to a bucket is, is getting the better of me. Just as a reminder to make an anvil. Where is the black steel anvil? There it is. You need uh, seven double ingots, which is 14 normal ingots. Okay, you see all these signs behind me? I've had to do this on my own sanity because, uh, yeah, trying to look all this stuff up constantly is just confusing the heck out of me. So what have we got here? The very top here, this is stuff that we've kind of done a little bit of, but we need to scale up massively. So uh, we take hematite, flux, and charcoal in the blast furnace, and we make pig iron. That's what we've done today so far. We can all take the pig iron, we can hammer that into a high carbon steel ingot, High carbon steel ingot we can hammer into steel. Great, we've done that. We just need to scale that up because we're going to need a lot more pig iron and a lot more steel for what's to come. Immediately after that, uh, we need to get to black steel. So we take the steel from here and we can melt that down with nickel and black bronze to get us weak steel. We've done a tiny bit of this. We then take pig iron, which comes out of there, and weak steel, which comes out of here, weld the two together. That gives us a high carbon black steel ingot. And the high carbon black steel ingot we can hammer into black steel and we've just made four of those we're gonna need a lot more of those as well let me show you why because down here this is where things start to get interesting we take black steel from there we take steel from there and we combine that with bismuth bronze and sterling silver that gets us to weak blue steel okay weak blue steel we combine with more black steel here we weld those together to get high carbon blue steel ingots and those high carbon blue steel ingots we can hammer into blue steel fantastic and we need to repeat the same thing for red steel so 
We take uh, more black steel that comes out of there, more steel that comes out of there. We mix that with brass and rose gold, melt it all down to make a weak red steel ingot. Weak red steel, we combine with more black steel to get a high carbon red steel inlet. We weld those two together and then we hammer a high carbon red steel into red steel. Then we've got blue steel, we've got red steel, we've got steel steel, and we can craft red steel, black, red steel, blue steel, and steel into a bucket. So let's just look at the bucket recipes here. Here is the red steel bucket recipe. You can't do anything with a red bucket. It has no purpose other than to help you form a, another bucket. So you need two red steel ingots to make a sheet. You can hammer that sheet and then hammer that into a bucket. Exactly the same with the blue steel here. And then you have a red and a blue steel bucket, which you combine with a bunch of raw iron ingots. And that gets you to a bucket, just a bucket. And the bucket will finally enable us to move water sources, lava sources, and any other fluids of which there is... Uh, 22 pages of varying fluids and stuff in the game. My goodness, but that's going to be a game changer once we get there. But this, this is quite a process and we've only done this little bit so far. We've got to do all of this and all of this and we've got to massively scale up the amount of black steel and steel steel and pig iron that we get produced. Now that's not going to be very fun for you to watch. I've already uh, put way too much of this type of footage in this episode already, I feel. So what we're going to do is continue with this process. I am not giving up. This, there's a lot to do, but we're going to crack on and make sure we get it done. So I'm going to go and do a lot more mining. We're going to uh, gonna do a lot more blast furnacing. We're going to do a lot more smelting and welding and hammering. And we're going to get red steel. We're going to get blue steel. We're going to get to that bucket. So here's the little montage of my journey to get there. What a journey this has been. Look at all these crazy minerals we've gathered. We are very, very low on uh, black steel. However, um, we are ready, I believe, to make a bucket finally. Let's uh, offload these actually. There are excess red steel ingots. We've done it. We have a blue steel bucket. We have a red steel bucket. We have ingots. We can make a bucket. Yes! All this for a bucket? <laughs> You're not joking. Oh my goodness me. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. A bucket of water. Yes! New recipes. This is absolutely... Oh, I picked up my rotten sandwiches. This is a game changer. We can place water. The thing that seems so simple and you take for granted in vanilla Minecraft and... Um, Oh yeah, I forgot to take all this stuff in. So much time has passed. I've plant, replanted my crops in winter and forgot that winter has, is coming and is uh, already early winter, yes. <laughs> we can get lava. Oh my goodness, we need to find our way down to a depth and um, pick up some lava. We can pick up water. We can do so much with this. Cobble gens are on the menu, boys. This is awesome. Ah... So much effort went into this bucket. This is totally terra firma craft endgame stuff. Now we can really start cooking with gas. I can't wait to see what we do next. So as you saw from the time nuts there, we, we 
had to create a whole bunch of other materials that we didn't have in order to get to our blue steel and red steel. So we had to make rose gold, which we'd never made. We had to make sterling silver. We went through a lot of our black steel, had to top that up. Um, the bismuth bronze, nickel we'd already had. Uh, we've got lots of steel on the go here. We already had a lot of brass, which we needed for the red steel, which was great. And yeah, still got tons and tons of pig iron and um, black bronze at the back there. And of course, all the new anvils. So all our old anvils have been retired over here. And uh, now we have black steel, red steel, blue steel anvils, and the corresponding hammers to go with those. Absolutely awesome. I can't believe how excited I am about a bucket. Uh, one thing I've just realized, with our automated washing and um, crushing process with the cobble, now, in theory, we can make a cobble gen and just connect it up straight to it, which means, more or less, infinite free minerals. <laughs> in theory, I'm not sure what type of cobble we're going to get. Just plain cobble? These are the things we need to find out. So, quick creative world test. Quick viability check here on the cobble gen concept. So, we have a lava source, and that is passing over uh, a line of mechanical drills that are waterlogged. So the water will flow out and turn to, in this case, it actually turned out to be your rhyolite. I'm guessing it's sort of biome dependent. So whatever the predominant stone type is in the area is what the lava will turn into. No, that can't be right because this is that site. I'm not sure why it ended up being that, but that's what's happening here at least. Uh, that all gets broken into the, the rocks, and then we've got two crafters, one here turning it into cobble. That goes straight into a washing station inside our processing center. And number two over here will get put into a case fan with lava that we can now do, and that'll turn it into stone. And we can just collect stone here and all the minerals over there. Nice. Uh, so this, this tells me that the uh, solution is viable. Now I need to sort of add up the stress units for the components that are necessary and backwards engineer this into my actual world with a dedicated power source and fitting it into our old processing center with the nice new building. And we seem to be getting some rocks around the back here, so I probably just need to box this guy in a little bit. Okay, so let's get some components together here. Uh, drills, some nice. Uh, lava. That's our major bottleneck here, and I've got an idea. Also, I've just realized something. This water bucket, it means we're never going to go thirsty again. Look at this. Portable drinking water that's infinite. <laughs> so, our drill site, just north of um, our base, is where we've been working before, and we've already gone quite deep here. And if I remember correctly, there's lava somewhere here. If we just go down a little bit further than where we've been, we'll punch through into here. And there's this big old lava lake just here. We'll send this down, we'll get it to the lava level. And then in theory, we should just be able to like water bucket off the side, make some obsidian to stand on and scoop ourselves up some lava. Okay, I think we can safely say We've hit the lava lake level there. Let's bring her back up. I had to make a new hole here, uh, just a little bit further along from the other one because the other one was waterlogged most of the way down already. And we don't have any way of breathing underwater to get down there yet. So if we just place water source right here, let it fall all the way down, we should end up creating an obsidian platform we can stand on and collect ourselves some lava. And I'm assuming we'll get hot stuff. Oh man, here we are at the bottom of the world. And here we go. Hot stuff. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, two lava sources on the surface. That's all we should need for now. And now we can do some planning to figure out how we're going to integrate our idea into this build. One more thing we can do that I haven't been able to do before is a trash can. So if I do this and then just put a chute on top, we've made it safe to walk on and anything I throw on there just goes straight into lava. 
like all this rubbish over here from the processing. That's fantastic. Well, I think I found a small flaw in my ore processing facility. We've got no power. We've got no power. I think the lake's frozen. <laughs> We've got no water. Yep, that'll do it. Maybe this might help keep it a little less likely to freeze. Not sure. We shall see. Okay, we're back in business. Now we can figure out how much uh, power we've got here and if we've got any to spare. Okay, based on my calculations, this room is using 2,312 stress units with all the various things going on. And for the new stuff, we need 1024, so we are a deficit of 776. Um, so we would either need more water wheels or an additional windmill to do what we want to do. Good to know. And then overall direction of things. We want to get things into this wash station. And we're going to do that, I think, by coming in here. I think we're going to make this whole thing out this side of the building over here. So I guess we're going to need to dig a little area to put this thing in. And it could be like a little side building of sorts. There's a new belt coming in from outside through the side wall now, and that should bounce items onto this trap door, drop straight into our washing facility there. And that pops outside here where we can start putting in the rest of our machinery. Uh, dug a big hole, need to fill in this a little bit, but um, yeah, this is looking like a good start. Okay, I think this is it in a nutshell. We're gonna have the cobble gen loading onto this belt above here. It's going to go into here, split two ways, once into this mechanical crafter to make cobble that goes over there to get washed, and once over this way to make cobble to get burned. Okay, so a little update here. Um, got some power in, so we've got new water wheel here. Of course, we don't need to worry about rerouting water anymore. We could just put water sources there, which is fantastic. Um, that gives us uh, 1,024 stress units, which should be everything we need. We scale that up to 32 RPM and we put that into the drills right here. So they're working. Next, we've got to put in the rest of this cobble gen and then connect everything else up to this power, specifically these guys. I've both got to get connected somehow. So I've got to reroute the power from there to there and then also down to these two fans. I may need an extra water wheel after all of this because I didn't account for the two fans. So um, yeah, let's see how this goes. By right, Joe, I think we've got it. So we've got, we did need an extra water wheel uh, as soon as uh, I haven't connected it back up. Here we go. Now we should be able to do this. Everything's connected, not overstressed. The drills are going. They're all waterlogged. We've got to drop the lava here in a minute. And then we're also taking the same power over here. And we've got it across to these guys at the same speed. And then we've got the fans down here too. So we've got to put lava here, lava here. And then we've got to set up a filter over there once we're ready. Okay, let's go get our lava sources. They're just over here. Yoink. So this one goes in here. Stop right there. That gives us a burning flame. Hopefully none of this sets on fire. Should be good. Lava source number two. And that just needs to go here. Mm -hmm. Before I do that, I'm gonna Take that out, stop the drills so this stays solid. If we put this here, I should make stone underneath, stone underneath, stone underneath, stone underneath. I previously blocked these with some spare vaults, so that stone will get broken and reformed continuously. I need to block this in. I didn't connect these. Okay, that should all in theory be working. All right, I think we're I think we're ready to test. So, let's put this on. That'll start the drills. We should get our first stone starting to fall onto here. Nice. 
and it doesn't turn the corner. <laughs> okay, I need to extend that belt out and uh, pull the other one back. Nice. Stone. Go in two ways. Fantastic. Turn to cobble here. Oh, there's a bit of uh, stone fell in the mix there. Put it on the belt, please. Yes, cobble going to get washed. Over here, cobble getting heated. Cobble disappearing. Oh, where'd the chest go? I did have chests here. I'm guessing they burned. <laughs> That's no good. Piece of rhyolite cobble comes onto here, goes in there. Gets heated, gets heated, gets heated. Turns into rhyolite, ends up up there. There we go. <laughs> yes, okay. Now we need to sort out our chest getting burned. We probably need to use a vault and then um, connect a chest up to that. Okay, that might actually work out better. So I actually can remove a lot of this. Uh, that we need to keep. Can I simplify this a little bit? Okay, that did simplify things quite a bit. Removing that fan, we could get rid of a whole bunch of nonsense here and uh, save ourselves a fair few gearboxes in the process. We've got a lot of storage there with a hopper going into there. That doesn't look like it's gonna burn, I think. Um, I think we're looking good. Let's turn this on once more. Oh, we're missing a connection here. Like that, there we go. One gearbox missing. Okay. So, now it should be working. Cobble crafted on the belt. Burned. Turned to stone, ah! No, come on. <laughs> Why did I die? That hasn't happened in a while. Oh, I'm at spawn. What? Oh my goodness. <laughs> we should be ending up, there we go. Yes. Raw rhyolite, let's put that in there with that. We're getting raw stone. That's gonna back up and get pretty full. This is getting washed and... Yes, it's coming through into here. It's stopping right here. It's getting washed. And then we're starting to collect some minerals. Fantastic. All right, I think we'll leave this thing doing its thing for a little while and we can check in next episode to see how much stone and how many minerals we're getting for free, basically. And uh, yeah, uh, as with the creative world, there's a little bit of blocking in I probably need to do here because some of the stone just sort of, once it gets drilled, ends up flying all over the place. So yeah, there's some here. Let's just block this in. And it looks like I've got to play with some speeds because it's already backing up here. So we've got to amp up the speed somewhere along the line here and uh, make sure that the, what is the bottleneck? These are the bottleneck. So we need to ramp up the speed of these guys, but it's working. It just needs accelerating. We'll play around with it, but it's functional and we'll check in next time after I've had a little tinker and maybe I'll even have time to put another little side building around this guy. Wow, what an episode. We've gotten to buckets. There it is, right in my hand there. This has been the most hard to obtain thing in the entire game and it has opened up so many possibilities with lava sources, water sources, everything just, uh, everything just got interesting. And the ice is already starting to melt behind us. It is now January the 7th, incredible. So uh, yeah, we should be getting into spring when we start next episode and we'll see what else we can do with this stuff. I've got so many cool ideas. Automate, we can farm wherever we want now. Just think about that. We don't have to farm just where there's water sources. We can make water sources and farm wherever we want so we can automate farming. Oh, there's so much to think about. 
So we'll have a little uh, noodle on what we can do. And if anyone's got any bright ideas of uh, exciting things we can do now we've unlocked this game-changing bucket, then uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give us a like. And if you'd like to see what we get up to next time, then please subscribe. Take care and see you all next time. Bye-bye.